So this is as far as we've got last time in the previous tutorial we've got this uh, cloud rendered onto the HDRI backdrop and now I'm going to look at uh, building a little scene that incorporates everything that we've done so far. Um, I was thinking this ground plane then can become water we'll use uh, pro materials, water surfaces and this, no that, no, yes lake water, okay and I'm going to reduce the bump effect somewhat. Let's try a minus 10, see how that looks. Mm, a bit too reduced, perhaps. I suppose the other thing is we've not got any sun in this yet. So I'll uh, I'll enable the sunlight, and that's going to be off to one side. So I need to organize it so the sun is where the sun is in the image. So Control and Alt, double click on the roller ball, then if I switch to a wireframe combined scene, Control and Alt and click where the sun is, I can try and position the sun exactly where the other sun is. So now we're getting some effect on the water. I'm going to modify the material for the water and make it to minus 20 on the bump, so it's a bit of a more crinkly effect. And the horizon's looking a little bit uh, solid, so I'm probably going to have to reintroduce haze. So we'll go back to custom sky now that's burning out because of all the other effects so reduce horizon effect reduce uh, the sky color I don't think that's interacting anyway because I'm not going to set take out sun glow and then we're just left with the color of the sun but that itself is still rather intense so I'll I'll set the sun color down to an orangey color and see how that looks quite uh, quite intense but I quite like the effect and then I'll switch the haze on. That's quite strong too. So if I set the haze to an orange colour, that'll reduce the effect and uh, the horizon won't be so obvious then. So it's getting somewhere now. I'd like a bit more contrast in the sky. So one thing I can try is tone mapping the HDR. Now, the thing is that the HDR is not really high dynamic range because it's been generated in Bryce, it's a low dynamic range, so the operation of the tone mapper can be a bit unpredictable. So I don't know whether it's going to increase the contrast or reduce the contrast or change all the colours out, so it's a bit of a random effect. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, that's, that's actually gone in my favour, so I'm going to stick with that. And so what I'm going to need now is a bit of terrain in the foreground, so I'll get rid of this sphere and I'll create. No, I'll I wasn't going to do that, I was, I'll use create and I'll create a terrain and I'll edit this terrain. Remember to set it to solid, new, and I'll, I'll draw like an arc round like that, and then use mounds. So I want to create like a, a, a sort of a bay effect. So that's that. And then enlarge it and flatten it a bit and move it away from the camera. And then move it around so we can see it looks like I don't know a cove or a, or a bay. I think I'm gonna have to make it a bit bigger or sink it a bit more to get it closer to the horizon. I'll make it bigger and then move it back. So I've got it passing underneath, underneath the camera, and then off in the direction of the horizon there. So I'll, I'll lift the camera up a little bit. Right, um, material wise, I think I'll go to um, the shared materials. This is a material you can get from Bryce5.com, and it's this grey mud and rock. Instead of it being slope controlled, I'll hold the shift key down, click on that, I'll go for wherever the basic category is, and I'll blend it with the alpha from this red fractal channel, that one there, just to mix things up a bit. So how's that going to look? So this is being skimmed by the sunlight that's uh, pass it's quite low, so there's no other light in this scene. I'd still like that headland a bit further away, but I'm going to have to make the train a lot larger. Then raise my camera, well, lower the train, raise my camera, see if I can get that more into the distance. So it started to interact slightly with the haze now, which is what I was looking for. I can rotate it round a bit, back off, and uh, just generally adjusting to 
for compositional reasons here now. So I want some of this effect in from the sky. I can, I can go for a wider field of view if I want more of these clouds in a bit of that blue over there. And uh, try and try and arrange it so I can see a bit of this cove so it goes all the way around in an arc. So I'm just uh, setting things up experimentally. I mean I could change the aspect ratio. Let's have a look at the different aspect ratio, see how that seems. So trying to get down to a point where we've produced a final image now. Okay, the, the field of view seems a bit wide on that. So I'll narrow the field of view and move the land across a bit so it forms a complete arc and then move the camera in. Just want a bit of this. I want, I want the sun on the, on the right but to be able to see the inside of this cove with a bit of the sunlight over the water there so it's just a bit of a faff setting all this up but at least with the clouds being rendered into the backdrop you have the advantage that uh, you can you can preview the scene quite quickly so that's the sort of general idea and uh, I suppose there's the last thing well this, this could try and put a fill light in here to uh, or, or yeah, I'll, I'll try that. As you say, there's a number of lighting options. I've got a, just a standard radial light. Put it in with the camera. See whether it lights this area in front of the camera a little bit. So I'll put it up there, and then just to fill in on the ground here. So I could I could make that a bit stronger. Um, right, and probably a bit bluer. So I make it a blue tint because this this a uh, this is light arriving from the sky perhaps and um, if, if, I, if I interlink that I'll include only the terrain for that one so it doesn't uh, include this and I'll add trees we've got these palm trees but I don't want them I want them to be mostly in silhouette so move them into the scene and put them by the water's edge I'm gonna have to enlarge them considerably whoops not that much up, rotate so they're leaning out slightly over the water. See how that looks. Not quite in the right position. Not bad though, I suppose. Um, so I'll be set. I'm on higher ground here because I'm looking a bit down on them. See, so sort of get the idea where we're heading with this. So right, with the volumetric cloud sunlight effect. This tr the, the reason these palm trees are slow is because they've got transparency on this material so if we were using high dynamic range image lighting then uh, it would be very time consuming to render that but we've only got the light sources linked to the terrain the terrain, the clouds and the backdrop are all rendered into the HDRI so uh, it makes the rendering process quite quick as you can see so really once that's done which uh, I mean, obviously, it's just struggling a little bit on that transparency there. And then I'm going to call that in and say that's uh, that's an example of how you could use the uh, the scene converter to capture a sky and then use that sky in a scene. You can uh, quickly set up your scene using that with uh, with the advantage that all the the complicated stuff's captured in your sky. So the time that you've spent rendering that out and setting it up, you can reuse this sky over and over again in other scenes and uh, that all the hard work's been done for you. Okay then, that's the end of the tutorial and the end of the render.